It's Father's Day tomorrow. And as I am just seated out here listening to the birds, I am reminded that Father's Day is a hard one for many of us. I had an enormous grief bomb this morning and I think a part of me even repressed um, and just completely ignored the fact that it was Father's Day. Um, I didn't even get any from my husband. I had completely blocked it out of my mind um, because this one would be the third year without my dad. And um, as many of you may or may not know, my father passed away two and a half years ago and it was very sudden and tra tragic and traumatic and um, it was, I mean, it completely flipped my life upside down. Um, I was one of the lucky ones because I know there's a lot of us, a lot of, you know, healers out there who didn't have the relationship that they wanted, deserved, um, with their father. And um, I call myself a really lucky one because I had everything I could have wanted and more. Um, I was spoiled. Uh, I don't even know if you can spoil a child with love, but I got so much love. Um, my father was one of the closest people to me. He was uh, my anchor, my safety. He was at every single appointment during my decade of chronic illness. He was always there for me. He was my strength. He was the person I could rely on, the person I would text at like three in the morning when I couldn't sleep. He was just always there. And so obviously it hurts a little more on Father's Day, just being reminded that he's not physically with me. And um, I really just wanted to come on here and just share a little bit about, you know, just the fact that whatever you're feeling on Father's Day, whatever comes up, allow it. It is valid. Whether you are grieving the loss of a loving father or the loss of a complicated relationship with your father, whether you're grieving the relationship you should have had, you could have had the one that you deserved there is grief here it's complicated and it's okay and so many of our father's days may not look you know joyful or um the way that you would expect and that's okay if your day looks different if you don't feel like doing much if you are just feeling like you need time to yourself or if you feel emotions bubbling up. This is your invitation to allow. If I were to ask you a question, to just pause for a second and ask yourself, where in my body does the grief live? Just notice that. Maybe you do that with me right here, right now. Thinking of Father's Day whatever it is that's coming up for you that's bringing grief for you can you notice where in your body the grief lives is it in your chest in your stomach maybe it's in your throat maybe it's all over can you notice your thoughts about grief what do i believe to be true about this grief without judging, without any expectations, just being curious here. When we notice the dialogue, we notice the part that's showing up. And again, we're not here to fix it. We're literally just here to make space. When we make space for our grief, for our own pain, we also make room for the healing to happen. And we also build capacity to hold space for others. And so if you were to just pause here right now, I give you permission to grieve. Can you give yourself permission to grieve? Can you give yourself permission to feel whatever it is that's coming up without judging it? Just allowing, knowing that you 
are not your emotion, that you are not your grief, but that the grieving is a part of the healing. And that if we can just invite it in and allow it, in, especially in these difficult moments, that over time it gets softer. Grieving has been such a pivotal part of my journey. And I believe it should be a pivotal part of yours as well. That's literally why I've made it my mission to educate about grief, to help you build and cultivate a safety with all emotions. If you're on this journey of healing, then the grieving needs to happen as well. We can't expect ourselves to walk into the life that's waiting for us, that's meant for us, that we're wanting so badly, unless we also grieve what was, what could have been, what we expected. It's a process. It's not an easy one. It's one of the most uncomfortable and painful when it comes to emotion, that grieving process. It's one that this community bypasses a lot one that I myself bypassed. And yet, we all have loss. And it's not just the loss of someone, but it's the loss of safety, the loss of ability, the loss of health, the loss of dreams, relationships. So much loss. Loss upon loss. The grief in this community is complicated. But the grieving doesn't have to be complicated. It really is about making intentional time and space, creating this space for your grief and for the healing to happen. I have been guiding a group of 11 incredible women through grief weekly, and I've seen transformation taking place. And it has been an absolute honor to witness this unfolding, to witness others grief and witness their healing simultaneously. And what I notice came up a lot is almost this realization, this aha moment in those who I've been working with. They had no idea how healing the grieving itself would be. Most of us don't even realize that there is grieving that needs to happen. And that's really what I'm here to share with this community. That we can heal as we grieve and grieve as we heal. We shouldn't have to separate, you know, grieving and healing. It's a part, it's a part of the process. And we also don't need to fear the grieving. We can learn to grieve, we can learn to cultivate safety with emotion and really see how the grieving process can be a catalyst in many ways. I could talk about this for hours, but I really just wanted to share, especially with those of us who are having an extra difficult day on Father's Day, that I see you, that your grief is valid that you have every right to feel whatever it is that you're feeling, whether it's jealousy, rage, whether it's guilt, shame, whether it's sadness, despair, whatever it is, invite it in like you would a friend. It's safe to feel all emotions. There are no bad emotions. There's just the story we attach to it. And so what if today, you were to take a moment to honor your grief, to notice where in your body it sits, to notice the story in your mind, to allow it to sit with it, to breathe with it without trying to fix or change. And if it feels like too much, if it feels loud, I invite you to pendulate and connect with what is supporting you. Maybe it's the ground beneath you. Notice how it feels for the ground to support you. Notice how hard it is, how stable it is, how firm it is. At any given moment in time, you are supported and you are held. 
even in your grief. And then as you anchor to that groundedness, to that sense of support, stability, can you check in once more to see if the grief has changed, to see if it looks any different? You can do this for a few minutes, letting go of expectations, not expecting a big shift, but giving your grief the dedicated time and space that it deserves to have. And I'll also add that journaling has been such an incredibly powerful tool for me as well. And so if today there's grief that's in there, but you can't quite connect, can you put pen to paper? Can you invite it in as if it were a friend? Grief, I invite you in. Tell me your story. Tell me where you live. Tell me what you need. These are all some of the ways that I work with grief and help my clients work with grief. And I also have an entire membership Part of my membership that is dedicated specifically to helping you move with, live with, grow with, and heal with grief. So if you're interested, you can DM me um, or check out my membership, but I really just wanted to be here to say I see you, I hear you, I'm grieving with you. We're grieving together and we're healing together. Happy Father's Day.